Hey guys, this is Danny Boy. I should mention that after I've beaten Legends of Grimrock, I will go back to Mass Effect 3 for a while and just finish up some stuff. But, wanted more of a break. Played that game for like two months straight. Very exhausting. So, standard strategy, lure him into a room that is at least two squares wide, and you can very easily strafe him. My rogue just leveled. Always a good thing. There's another one of these guys in here, though. But I... You've probably noticed, I am definitely visibly increasing in power. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with stuff a lot better than I used to, and I kill stuff a lot faster than I used to. Unfortunately... Well, that time it did a lot of damage. The first time, I don't know if that was a crit. I would assume that fire does extra damage against plants. But it seemed like on one shot it only did 21. That time it did 44. That's a lot better. And it didn't say crit, so I don't know. Apologies, I was paused for an extended period of time. I don't know what that was about. I assume... I'm hoping that these plant things gain some sort of potency later. Because <laughs> they're really, I mean, beyond just having a decent amount of health, they don't really hit particularly hard. Granted, I don't let them hit me that often because they waddle so slowly. The little guys are much more of a threat. That shoot you. But not the big fat ones. Even in groups, they're so slow. Of course, we save before going through a doorway. Every time. And I hear scary things. I see... Another of the plant duders. And they're so slow to just turn. And I was not expecting this. I don't know if I even survived this. Notice that the guys in my back flank are taking damage. Because they're being I'm being attacked from behind. If you're attacked from the left, the guys on the left take damage. On the right, the right guys on the right take damage. Then front, the guys in the front, and in the rear, the guys in the rear. Now, normally I would quick load when somebody died, but I know that there is a crystal that I have not used. So I'm going to just work my way there and use it. No point in saving those things forever. Just... At least I don't think so. I would much rather if something, if I die in a situation, just quick load than like go back two floors to find a blue crystal that I didn't use and and heal everybody. So I saved it for just this reason. One of my guys is starving. Yep, there we go. Now gonna probably just yeah. Once one starts starving, just feed everybody. I mean, why not? There we go. You guys, I think for a while I'm going to play some retro RPGs and just do that for a period of time. Because there's not a lot to play other than Mass Effect 3, really, that's coming out that I'm particularly interested in. Leveling up my rogue. For my rogue, I'm just emphasizing missile weapons and a bit of dodge, and that's basically it. Just dodge to give him a little survivability when he does get attacked, and then everything else just pouring it into missile weapons. I'm not bothering with throwing weapons or... Or unarmed or anything. Just everything into missile weapons. I just want him to focus on that. I don't want to spread out my points. I don't want him to to use like a D&D &D term, mad, multiple attribute dependency. I don't want him to have points in lots of different things. It's pointless. Well, that I know right now. Maybe there's like an amazing throwing weapon that returns to you later or something. That, that doesn't have a limited amount of... ...of uses. And I'll kick myself, because I, I won't be able to really use it effectively later. Granted, I would assume that there's just as good of a bow or something later as well, so... I don't know. We will see. The one... This is true. The one advantage throwing weapons do absolutely have over missile weapons, though, is that missile weapons require you to have the missile weapon in one slot and the ammo in another slot. Whereas with a throwing weapon, you can just have the throwing weapon in, in a, just a single slot and use it. That definitely is a big advantage. So you could have him be your dedicated torch carrier, or you could have him be kind of a hybrid where 
he can throw weapons or he can use melee in the other hand if he was a front line rogue rather than a backfield rogue. So there, there definitely, there is reason to use uh, throwing weapons. Definitely advantages. I think I might have just seen a switch on the floor that I definitely did not notice in the actual game. I just skipped past some running and some wandering. Should be in combat in just a second. Should be able to progress in just a second, too. Yep, there's the key. When I see a switch, I didn't actually use it yet. You want to look everywhere. You don't want to miss anything, because everything gives you an advantage. Food is a, gives you an advantage. Reagents for potions. Obviously, armor pieces and weapons and whatever. Don't want to miss anything. I have found a sling. I didn't realize at the time, though, that I need to actually have the stones equipped in my other slot. Sling is a big improvement over just throwing the stones manually. Nice damage improvement. My rogue is finally starting to actually be... ...like a real live boy. <laughs> useful. I mean, he's been useful for a while, but he's starting to actually come into his own. Which is great. Mage 2. Finally has a spell. I have several more, but I, I can't cast any of them. I don't have enough points yet. Cast, like, level 3 spells. Fire Burst does the job anyway, really. Though I have to wonder, is it really any better against single targets than just having him use a spear and just poking him? It's groups, it's certainly better, but it's quite awkward to cast spells. Requires a lot of mouse movement. But let me skip to... something. I'm not skipping past, like, any puzzles or anything, by the way. It's just... walking into areas we've already been to find new areas. I didn't actually skip very much, though. I just skipped... Like, ten seconds! Uh... So, I see a big fat guy, and I see one of the little guys. Little guys are far more pl problematic than the... big fat guys. And unfortunately, yes, we need- we need right angles. We need right angles, not straight lines. <laughs> there we go. All about the fancy sidestep. There we go. Pop. Should be about done with this video, I would say. This is turning out to be... ...fairly long. Trying to make these kind of short... ...but all possible. So, here's a room. Secret at that, I get another heavy... Armor pieces I can't actually use yet, and there is a skull. As I mentioned in a previous episode, skulls are beneficial for minotaurs. I, I don't know if they have other uses, but I don't have any minotaurs, but if you have them in your inventory as a minotaur, and you have a skill, a minotaur-specific skill, it allows you to get bonus attack power for every skull you have. Which is quite cool. Alright guys, I think I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more, please like the video if you enjoyed it, please sub if you want to see more Legends of Grimrock, and leave comments and feedback, ask questions, I'll answer them. Have a good one.